Hello, Mr. Craig. How are you? Uh, I wanted to uh, kind of chronicle what we're, we're checking out here today on this Lunt uh, Solar Scope. Uh, I got your email, and of course, I've got your uh, recommendation as far as checking out what seems to be the problem. Um, and I'll explain to uh, whoever might be watching this what's going on. I can make the adjustment on the uh, double sack unit, uh, and it seems to lose pressure after 10 or 15 minutes. I can uh, initially get a very nice uh, service detail like we're looking for, uh, but after uh, 10 or 15 minutes, uh, it, it probably ends up uh, having. 30 or 40 percent of, uh, of what it should. So I believe we've got a leak in a seal uh, or something similar to that. So uh, I'm taking this apart for the first time. So bear with me. Okay, boys and girls, I'm back. Okay, what we're going to do is uh, try to open up this pressure tuner for the first time. Let's see if I can zoom in just a little closer. Help you guys see it a little better what we're uh, about to tear apart here. So let me find the zoom. And that's the double stack unit here, the uh, black knob and the uh, brass threads. Typically what I do, um, you know, and I remember when we first got the scope, uh, when I was uh, screwing this knob down tighter uh, to make the uh, pressure tuner work, it was, it was under pressure obviously because it was much harder to turn. Now the way I've done it typically is run this down to like a thread and a half to two threads and I get all the service detail with very good clarity uh, like I want. But what's happening is I'm losing, uh, after 10 or 15 minutes, I'm losing that uh, uh, adjustment to where uh, I basically have no service detail. So I'm thinking we have a, uh, uh, a leak in a, a rubber seal, or like Craig uh, Freeman is telling me, um, who is Tacoma Skies. He sent me an email yesterday what to check, and what we're going to check here is we're going to back this out. There's a seal underneath here, which I've never had this off, so bear with me. I think I see the seal on the end. I don't know if you can see it or not. Eh, it's awfully hard. Let's see if I can get closer. There's a rubber seal right on the end of this cup right here, it looks like. So I'm assuming I need to take that out. What Craig is telling me is uh, to check for pitting on that uh, rubber O-ring, uh, scarring, cracks, uh, breakage, and just see what kind of general shape it's in. So I'm going to set this down, wipe my hands of, of the grease, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, taking a little break, got my hands clean again. I'm gonna get them dirty all over again, it looks like. But what we're gonna do is try pulling this. I'm not sure where this cup comes out or not. I am not sure. Well, I can tell you offhand. I see no breaks or cracks. Now, having said that, uh, there may be some uh, a grain of sand underneath, in between the uh, the, the rubber O-ring and the the cylinder here. I assume that can be causing uh, the, the air to leak underneath there. So. I've got to learn how to uh, take this uh, piston out 
uh, so I can uh, inspect it and get that O-ring off a little better uh, and inspect it a lot more closely. And now if I've got to do a little research online or call Craig back and uh, uh, find out exactly how I need to do that. But uh, let me stop the recording. I'll do a little research and uh, I'd like to pull this out for you guys because uh, we'll, we'll be learning at the same time. So I'll be right back with you folks. Okay, we're back. After a little experimenting and looking around, what I've uh, found out, and Craig is probably laughing his tail off at me, uh, but basically what happens, in order to get this cup out, this piston, what needs to happen is that little cap on the end uh, of the overall cap, there's a small cap that screws onto it. I don't know if you can see that, I hope so. Put some real fine threads on it, so take your time. And there's a set screw underneath there. And I'm assuming if I loosen that, uh, the piston will come out so I can inspect the uh, O-ring. So what I'm going to do, and I've already, I've actually already taken that cap off and tried to fit the uh, the correct uh, Allen wrench to it. But uh, what I found is it, it is indeed a metric. So be careful you get the right one because uh, uh, I'm assuming that it can be stripped out. It's on there very lightly, just a slightest little bit of a pressure to tighten. So uh, when I put it back together, I won't overdo it. But uh, I've got an American, uh, and I'm not sure exactly what size, maybe a 330 seconds uh, Allen wrench. It's kind of a sloppy fit, but it's very loosely. That screw is uh, very uh, uh, lightly uh, tightened, so I'm not stripping out anything. So what I'm doing is taking that out. I wish you could see it better. Okay, that screw is loose. I'll put it to the side. I'm assuming that that piston will probably come out now. Yes, you just take your Allen wrench and just barely and that's what the unit looks like once you take it out and there's actually two o-rings there and it's got lots of gunk in it I'm gonna go ahead and take those off and inspect uh, underneath uh, the o-ring Craig is telling me also to check to make sure there are no uh, uh, cracks in the piston itself so I'll do that real quickly and uh, uh, come back and kind of give you a synopsis of what we have found here but uh, thank you all for uh, bearing with me here that's the inside and you can see there's lots of crud and lots of uh, lubricant and probably sand particles and everything else. So <clears throat> I'm hoping it's something that simple just needs to be cleaning and uh, re-lubricated. So I'll get back to you folks in a few minutes. Okay, and it's about what I expected. Uh, it's a very simple unit, actually. Uh, what Craig uh, Freeman has asked me to check, of course, and I'm not sure whether you can see it or not. There's actually a little orifice up in there. Make sure it doesn't have any uh, uh, grease in it or plugged up or anything stupid like that. If that's clear, what Craig has wanted me to check also is the inside diameter of this uh, brass cylinder to make sure there's no pitting, no scratching uh, from uh, embedded sand or dirt or whatever, uh, which would mean, if you can imagine this piston going in and, in and out to, to create that seal and everything, if that uh, uh, brass cylinder is scratched, uh, that brass would be laying up against here. If it's scratched, there's actually air escaping past the, the rubber o-ring 
in between that brass cylinder. He said that could be a possibility. Well, I ran my hand inside of it very well, and the actual surface feels very, very smooth. It's actually got a very slight honed uh, feel to it. It's not a, a perfect polish, but uh, I'm sure it needs a little friction with some honing uh, to make a really nice seal. But uh, everything seems to be fine, no scarring, no scratching. So I'm going to assume that's okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. The other part of that, I, I'm assuming, I'll have to confirm this with Craig again, but uh, he's asking me a, a possible leak uh, a place uh, that needs to be checked uh, is the actual cylinder itself. Uh, I'm assuming this whole cylinder is screwed into the side of the telescope. And what Craig is recommending, uh, if indeed, go ahead and take it off, wrap a couple of wraps of, uh, or whatever it takes to make a real solid seal on those uh, threads uh, that's actually been threaded into the telescope. And he's saying be very careful because it can be snapped off real easily. But uh, I'll, I'll confirm that indeed I need to take the cylinder off. But that's a, that's a real basic proposition too. Just find out what torque it is, back it off, put your uh, silicon tape on it, or I assume a silicon uh, paste, uh, put it back together, clean everything nicely, uh, clean all the threads off here, uh, Get rid of all the uh, uh, grain, grains of sand, dirt, debris, whatever. Regrease it. And I'll probably call uh, Lunt <clears throat> and actually uh, probably replace these uh, two rubber seals. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Rookie here. Sorry about that with the camera. Uh, but I'll probably replace these two seals here while I'm at it to, just to confirm that they are good. And I'll go ahead and grease it up, reassemble it back into the oops back into the uh, cup put your little screw back in screw your little cap on the outside and screw the cylinder back together and I think you're done you know I didn't see anything real obvious uh, so it could very well from what I understand could be a, a just a, a, a just some kind of debris in between uh, the, the rubber seal and that cylinder causing the problem uh, then again I've got to uh, figure out how to uh, get the rubber o-rings off so I'm not damaging those when I am taking them off. So I will let you uh, know how everything turns out. And uh, I appreciate y'all's time. And uh, hopefully we both learned something today. And I want to say a great big thanks to Craig Freeman, uh, Tacoma Skies. He is exceptional uh, at the uh, solar imaging. And obviously he's taking these things apart uh, probably more than he cares to think about. But uh, Craig, I really appreciate the info. And uh, I will let you know how it goes. Thanks again. Y'all take care. Thank you.